previously, we uploaded a video showing off high level combat in Tears of the Kingdom. You asked how to pull some of this off, so we'll break down exactly what happened behind the scenes and give a couple gameplay tips along the way as well. We first started off fighting a Flux Construct. To preface this fight, several Flux Construct arenas in Tears of the Kingdom take place in low gravity locations, and these moon jump locations change movement in combat quite a bit. So let's watch this first part, then go back and break it down. From the beginning, to dodge the Flux Construct's punch, we pivot shield jump to get out of the way. Shield jumping to dodge attacks is fairly straightforward. Walk in the direction you want to dodge, jump, then press ZL and A together. But by pivoting by pressing R beforehand helps us by making Link face the enemy properly while doing so. Otherwise, you often just face in the direction of the shield jump, making you waste time turning the camera back around. So instead, jump, then R to pivot forwards, then ZL and A. After any shield jump, pressing Y will spin your shield, which I'm gonna be honest, is mostly just for style points, but also helps me visually time what's coming up next. Then comes a bomb shield launch. Landing on the ground with a bomb fused to your shield will launch you skyward, and is exponentially more powerful during low gravity. So much so that for combat, I often go too high. So here I hold R to heavy dive to literally air break myself midair to stay a tad lower to the ground. Then pulling the paraglider and switching to a cannon fused shield while shield surfing points the cannon downwards, making an aerial bombardment. Flux constructs are very weak to explosive attacks, so even if the shots aren't a direct hit to the weak spot, it can still knock them apart pretty easily. After a couple more attacks, the construct heads for the skies, and level 3 flux constructs fly super high up. Fortunately, rocket shield surfing in low gravity is pretty overpowered. <sighs> Doing it once gives decent horizontal distance, but cancelling that with B and re-rocket shielding gives Link much more vertical momentum instead. Combining this with low gravity, the full glide suit, and tapping R for a light dive gives Link absolutely insane momentum and movement midair. This on its own is extremely useful for traversal as well. <laughs> We're now up against a boss Bokoblin and his squad, who start off by throwing a boulder. This, as you can see, can be recalled for a moment, then ascended through. The timing and aim of ascend is a bit tricky, but it is totally possible. Backflipping into bullet time and firing off a dazzle fruit first causes the entire squad to drop their shields and making follow-up shots a lot easier. We then approach them head-on and do something kind of confusing. First, we use the rocket shield. Pretty simple. But once we reach the peak of our ascent, we hold 5 bombs. This will drop them directly out of Link's pocket, and cause them to start falling towards the ground. But in superhero fashion, we immediately heavy dive to beat our own bombs back to the ground. We paraglide the split second before we touch the ground to not damage ourselves, although with the upgraded wingsuit that doesn't really matter, then bring up our shield and perform a shield block reset against our own falling bomb explosion. It's pretty hard to see here, but let's go over what a shield block reset is. It's a combat technique that carried over from Breath of the Wild, in which you jump into any attack while shielding, which pops you up into the air, resetting your jump, and giving you the ability to jump again, just high enough to enter bullet time. So one more time quickly, we rocket shield up, drop the bombs, quickly dive to beat our bombs back to the ground, and shield block reset against the bombs that are falling above us. This whole sequence is called a dive bomb SBR. We then throw Nadra's boomerang, which freezes targets, and rocket shield jump over the enemies so it comes back around to freeze them on the return back, killing several of them off screen. Then like before, we bomb shield launch again, but do something a little fancy at the end. For a split second, we tap R to light dive, Tap B to cancel the dive, then hold Y to charge a jump attack backwards. If you've watched Tears of the Kingdom speedruns, this is actually a speedrun strategy called Maw's Door Jumping. 
where doing this gives massive backwards momentum in the air. Doing this with the glide set, however, massively increases the distance, causing Link to fly backwards at incredible speeds, far enough to go all the way back and slam on the remaining foes. <laughs> Here again, we face off against a boss Bokoblin and a squad of Bokoblins. As same as before, we do a pivot shield jump, but with a wing shield, which gives us a much higher shield jump, high enough to do bullet time on flat ground. Then we use the multi-shot Great Eagle Bow with time bombs. This Great Eagle Bow, however, is glitched to have 5 shots instead of 3, using a glitch called Weapon State Transfer. Unfortunately, I won't go into explaining how you do it because it's fairly complex and there's multiple methods across multiple patches, but just know that it is possible. This is extremely useful because for the price of one time bomb, multi-shot bows actually spawn all three or five bombs, essentially duplicating your own bombs, making a massive pile of ticking time bombs. So this is totally possible with a vanilla five-shot Savage Lionel bow as well. Using a rocket shield will get you out of harm's way and above the fight to rain hell on the enemies on the way back down. This is when it gets a bit tricky. In this clip, we quickly parry, then shock the Moblin with an electric weapon. We do this because the Moblin's head is held high while shocked, which is actually incredibly important. We fuse an Ice Key's eyeball to our arrow, then fire right at the Moblin's chest. There's a lot of things going on here, so let's start with the bow. The bow we have here is a Royal Guard's bow, a low durability but powerful single shot bow. But in this case, this bow is a x5 multi shot bow, using the glitch we mentioned before. Side note, bows that are not supposed to have multi shots but are forcefully glitched to do so, makes the multi shot extremely wide. This can be used in our favor. The second part of this is a special ability with Key's Eyeballs, a nifty combat technique called Key's Orbiting. If arrows are shot near an enemy's head at certain angles and distances, it will home in on the head for the headshot, but miss it and fly around the backside of the enemy to orbit back around for a second helping. This can set up some really neat combos to have delayed attacks come several seconds after shooting your initial arrows. So, by firing the glitched Royal Guard's bow at this distance, with the Moblins held up high from the shock damage, and firing at the Moblins' chest, the middle arrow directly hits the Moblin, freezing it, while the two left and right arrows fly past still aiming for the head, and instead orbit back around the backside of the Moblin as a second missile volley. You can see it start to come back around at this part here. We then throw the Farage Reaper to make ourselves empty-handed, allowing us to use an optional technique gained in a side quest called the Earthquake Technique. This homes in on opponents and knocks them up for extra damage. While this is all happening, the Keys Orbiting Arrows start to arrive and land on the Moblin at the same time, making for quite a scene of the Moblin getting bombarded by attack after attack. The final arrow comes in to finally freeze the Moblin, and we go for a simple Bomb Shield launch and slam back down to finish off our foe. This short clip on this Lionel starts with a random two-handed jump attack, which is then stopped with the ability menu, then switching shields to suddenly enter bullet time. This is L Cancel, the base technique of the infinite height glitch, to cancel most animations by bringing up the L menu, then switching shields. This lets Link cancel the slam attack while being up in the air to use bullet time instead and headshot the Lionel. But on our way up, we switch to a rocket shield which moves us just a tad closer towards the Lionel and go into bullet time. Headshot, slam, yada yada. Side note though, generally when shooting from above, tapping R to start diving, then pressing ZR for bullet time will give you this diving shot effect. Not only looking cool, but also giving you a slightly better picture to see opponents. <laughs> In this 
final clip, we're gonna see some repeats of previous techniques. We shield block reset against a Lionel's attack to get bullet time, headshot it, then keys orbit a couple times like before, just with fire key size instead. We run back to do a familiar pivot shield jump, but this time with rocket shields, and it gets a bit more specific. Shield jumping forwards with rocket shields is easy. There's enough momentum for Link to keep his shield surfing. But when pivot shield jumping backwards with rocket shields, there actually isn't enough momentum to keep Link standing on his shield. Therefore, not enough time for the rocket motors to spin up and turn on. So in this case, you have to shield spin by pressing Y to force Link to stay on the shield, giving time for the rockets to ignite and sending Link on his way. It's neat that in this case, you have to use style in order for this trick to work. Then switching to a bomb fused shield midair will do the regular bomb shield launch, which then pops Link up into the air for bullet time, all while the orbiting key size arrive to bombard the poor Lionel over and over. Then most players know that you can mount headshot stun Lionels, and get a couple free extra hits in. Finally, we shoot another volley of time bomb multi-shot arrows like we did in a previous clip, as we dismount the Lionel. Then, not to get ourselves killed, we quickly fuse one of them to our shield, so we can bomb shield launch above. Fun side fact about these multi-shot time bombs, each one is fusible, an easy and cheap way to get a bunch of time bomb fused shields in a row. After the final bomb shield launch, we dive in and go for the final kill shot with some bomb arrows. Hopefully you learned something in this in-depth breakdown of some interesting combat tech that can maybe spark some ideas of your own, because that's what this game is all about, sharing ideas with others and building upon them for unlimited creativity. If you enjoyed this, let us know with a like. And of course, for everything else, Tears of the Kingdom, keep it here on GameSpot.